and welcome to the Sassandra Show. It's time for breaking news. Today I am joined by our political contributor, Senator Gaston. Senator, how are you today? I'm doing well. Yes, indeed you are. How's the weather there? Uh, actually, we just had our first snowstorm for the year. Oh my goodness. Well, we are praying for y'all because it is sunny outside. Can't you tell? <laughs> so listen, <laughs> let's jump into our first story. Um, President Biden told a White House audience, I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. In a cringeworthy attempt at self-deprecating humor during an event celebrating Black History Month. This has resulted in mixed reviews from citizens. Uh, Senator, what are your thoughts on the president's remarks? Uh, my thoughts on the president's remarks is that I think the president was trying to use this as a unique opportunity to uh, let the African-American community know that he's uh, very much uh, aware of the complexities uh, within our community. And that was his way of trying to uh, court the black vote. I think that he do understand the importance of the Divine Nine. Uh, I am a member of the Divine Nine as a member mm -hmm. of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity mm -hmm. Incorporated. He recognized the power that comes along with these unique organizations that have been on the front line of civil rights uh, and the front line of pushing social agendas within the African-American community. Uh, I do think that uh, there are individuals out there who may not be looking at this uh, within its proper context, because I think uh, prior to him making that statement, he was talking about uh, black history being uh, very important. Uh, mm -hmm. as an essential mm -hmm. part of American history. And he was sending a message across the country uh, to individuals like Ron DeSantis, who's trying to undo black history uh, within our society. And then he later on went to make that comment uh, about the importance of uh, the Divine Nine and that as a white boy that he's not naive uh, to uh, the realities of what happens in the African-American community. So I didn't take issue with it. I can certainly see how others on the other side might try to use that uh, against the president. If you were to rephrase what he said, what would you say differently so that people could understand it a little clearer and we would not have this mixed understanding? Because, I mean, I clearly understood what he said as well. And we've seen that he's been on, you know, our side as much as he could be during this entire presidency. So how could you say that differently for the president? Absolutely. I think that uh, what he could have said was that, you know, although uh, I am not black, uh, I certainly do uh, want to come closer uh, in my understandings of the issues plaguing the African-American community. And I would like to be a partner in that. And as a person who is non-black, uh, I certainly do uh, understand uh, the importance of people who look like me, who are white, uh, to be involved in the struggle, helping to push this country forward around uh, being more inclusive. Well, thank you so much well, for paraphrasing or rephrasing what the president meant. Uh, we want to move on to this next story. Our last story comes as a shocker to many, seeing, it, seeing as it is Black History Month. Y'all, the hit comic strip series Dilbert has cut ties with the creator, Scott Adams. This information has come to light after it was revealed that Adams made racist remarks whew, to the black community, even calling the black community a hate group. Senator, this is very upsetting. Mm. Well, I really want to temper my words, but uh, to be quite candid, I was pissed to the highest degree of festivity when I read that. Um, I think that he's a bigot. I think that he's a segregationist. And I also think that he is someone that's uh, trying to divide this country and trying to infuse hatred uh, into uh, the American fabric. And I think we've worked too hard uh, to move this country forward and to have someone like that to make the comments that he made disparagingly about African-American people and that he's arguing for a position of segregation has taken us backwards opposed to taking us forward. I think this is a person who espoused Jim Crow rhetoric uh, mm -hmm. and I think it has no place uh, in our general society uh, as a whole. So I was incredibly disappointed with the statements that he had made. Uh, not only that, he doubled down uh, as I listened to the clip where he talked about having a low percentage of black people actually living in his actual neighborhood. And he was uh, essentially bragging on the fact that he doesn't have many black people that live in his neighborhood. And so having individuals who are not only saying that black people as a whole are a hate group, he takes it to another level by also saying uh, to white people to get the hell away from black people. And he yes. says one thing that is to create your own communities, but not many black people being a part of that. 
That's unbelievable. That's Let me ask you something. I mean, he is known internationally. This comic strip is all over the world. Why are we just finding out where his heart is? It's been yeah. decades since he's been publishing his, his comic strip. strip. I'm sorry. Well, I do believe that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. I think that mm. as the has been pushing and putting pressure on individuals to examine, uh, examine the system of racism and institutional racism pertaining to whiteness. Uh, I think that it is really unearthing a lot and people are uh, can't stay silent. I think that people are uh, speaking out uh, because they didn't necessarily probably know that they espoused those racist tropes. Uh, but I think that once they've been pushed, uh, they have opened up their mouths to speak about how they actually feel in their heart. And I'm actually happy uh, that uh, this society is being challenged in the way that it is because we begin to see people for who, who they really are. I agree with you. And with that being said, we're going to take a short break. Thank you so much, Senator Gaston. We'll be right back. Don't y'all go nowhere for the culture. to the Sandra show. I hope your Tuesday is shiny as bright as this jacket I have on. Y'all, <laughs> but this jacket is not the only thing shining on set today. It is my band for the culture. Oh, yeah. Shiny, 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 shiny. Like shiny. Hey, y'all shining bright like diamonds. How y'all doing today? Y'all boy is good. Always love good. it, love it, love it. So listen, it's the last day of Black History Month. Talk to me. What y'all up to? What we doing? Hey, hey, we keeping the uh, the dream alive, and we're keeping the history going. Yes, especially here in Florida. And yes, you, I mean we always we always hear about this moving forward, but hey, we got to keep the dream alive and the history up front and up forward for our youth and everybody. Come on, yes. Alabon. Come 365 on. days a year. All year. Woo! Well, <laughs> as you know, they may say they, they only give us 28 days, but we are black and bold 365. Come on. Speaking of black excellence, we have a former music producer who embodies just that on the show with us today. So y'all sit back, relax, grab a nice bubbly beverage because it's time to get this show What? Hey! Let's get it started! Come on. Mm. That's all. <laughs> Listen, my first guest today is killing the game. He is a former music producer to amazing celebrities such as Two Chains, Bobby Valentino, B.O.B., and the list goes on. On top of that, he is the founder of Texas advancement center now that's what i call not a jack of all trades but a master of all trades y'all please give it up for mr marion skinner <laughs> Glad to, be come here. On. Glad to be here. It's Glad an to honor to have you here. Wow, you have done some amazing things and then did a whole transition to right, something right, else. Right. When did you find your love for music? Ah, uh, at an early age. Really? At an early age. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, the first time I actually visited Atlanta. Really? Yes. And what age and, did you um, visit Atlanta? I was right around 13, 14 13? Years old. Yes. You yes, went to the yes. smaller chocolate city because, you know, yeah, D.C. Yeah. is chocolate city. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a small rendition of it. So, I yes, love it. Absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, I actually went to uh, college around the corner at Full mm. Sail. No. Yes, oh, yes. Nice. So, you know, that's where I picked up my audio engineering degree at. That's amazing. And then uh, from there, I went uh, straight back to Atlanta and, and got to it. With two chains and B.O.B. <laughs> and Valentino. So who opened the doors for you and gave you like your first big gig? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it actually came from when I was interning. So I used to intern at a studio, big studio in Atlanta called Patchwork. Mm -hmm. uh, so just in uh, engineering there, what I would do is after I would set up everybody's mics and everything, mm -hmm. I had my music playing in the background. Get out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I snuck it in on them. Stop it. So, so uh, they came down <laughs> and were like, hey, what's up, man? What's that? Exactly. How Who's did this is move? Who's mm -hmm, is that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from there on, you know, their manager started saying, hey, I got this one cat. Check out his stuff. Check out his wow. stuff. And then it just kept going from there. That's amazing. So, yes, yes. So would you walk us through your process in the studio when you're putting a hit together? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it really just depends on the, the, the artist, mm -hmm. uh, really what vibe they're actually going with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, I mean, I'll even say, like, working with Bobby Valentino, mm -hmm. um, you know, we went through probably about 20 different tracks before they actually found the right one that wow. he actually wanted. Um, you know, same with 2 Chains. I mean, luckily with them, you know, I just got to send it over to them, and then they just sent it right back. So, you know, it's, it's much easier, you know, working with some. B.O.B. at the time, he was just coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that was right before Beautiful Girl. Did he you know, know his everything. sound, or you helped find his sound? He did. I mean, of course, it kind of switched up after uh, mm -hmm. how he came out, and then how the first album ended mm -hmm. up happening. It was a big difference. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely knew what they was well, doing When already, I tell so. you, that's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Beautiful Girl, all over Sing the world. It. That was like, oh my God. So you produced that track. Not that track. I engineered it. You engineered. Yeah, come on. I engineered Just as important. Yeah, there you go. There you come go. Come on, see? Yeah, so. Uh, come on now. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so when have you found the most challenging uh, when producing for celebrities? What have you found most challenging? Um, their time restrictions. Really? You know, the time that, yeah, the time. And so not really even got. the attitude or the different yeah, personalities. Yeah, it's yeah, more it's, about time. Yeah, because right? you got to think about it. I mean, while you're there, you, you're going to be sitting there waiting for them for the majority of the time. <laughs> Yeah, yes, let's just yeah, be honest. Know, yeah, know. let's just be honest. You just gonna really be sitting there waiting. But then when they come, you gotta help and work fast. So, yes, because yeah, they're really ready to go by the time they walk in the door. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. I feel so, you. I try yeah. not to do that to people. Is I try right? to be on time. Is that right? It's so important, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, I agree. What's up for you next? I agree. Um, well, you know, right now they, they, uh, I switched and pivoted on over to education now. Yes, uh, Texas so, Advancement. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Uh, Texas Advancement Center is the number one career college. Wow. Uh, so now I actually was given the name the king of education really so now i'm actually going around to different states assisting others opening up career colleges all around the u.s that's so. everything and yes. more y'all give it up come on that's a wonderful pivot Absolutely. there's nothing more important than education Absolutely. you know and you're such a great uh uh, role model for people and I'm sure the kids are drawn to you just because you work with such cool people <laughs> and when you use that platform to talk to them right. about things that are going to lead them in the right direction it's Absolutely. everything Absolutely. listen thank Absolutely. you for coming on the show and talking to us you. I appreciate you indeed indeed yes, likewise yes. we're going to take a short break we'll be back oh Marianne baby to the Sassandra Show. This is one of my favorite segments on the show because we get to talk about all things music, entertainment, and more. So cheers, y'all. It's five o'clock somewhere. Y'all, I am so excited. We have a surprise guest on the show today. Please give it up for my former classmate, Mr. Paul Whittingham. How you doing? How you doing? Hello there. Hey, How hey. are you? I'm well. And yourself? I am doing really, really good. good I'm so excited good. to have you today. Uh, likewise. Well, Trust we me have to, to let here. everyone know that we started school when together? Man, that sandbox wheels day sandbox. one. Sandbox. <laughs> In day one, so we started kindergarten yes. pretty much, and I haven't seen Paul in 30 years since we graduated, yes. and God has been so good. You've been to college, you've got your family, yes. there's so many wonderful things that have happened in your life, and then there are some real things that have happened in your Absolutely. life. We both lost our mothers, we just yes. found out a couple of minutes ago. So, you know, um, sending my love again to you and your family, Likewise. I know that was a really tough Likewise. situation, but you are here today because you work so hard hard and I know that your work ethic comes from watching you on the court yeah. in high school in junior high school yes. playing basketball there was someone who really motivated you let's talk about that first well actually I actually I look at him as, as an unbelievable mentor and a father figure man coach Bob Leitner if you're looking at this show if you're seeing this taking place right now Unbelievable guy, um, phenomenal coach, yes, he is. phenomenal friend, even better mentor, support system. Um, he 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 instilled in us at such an early age this code that he introduced mm -hmm. to us, and it's called the four D's of life. 
dedication, desire, defense, and determination. Mm -hmm. And when I look back over my life, I look at all the things that meant something to me. And that thing right there just always stood at the top of whatever list it was. And my best friends, um, Tony, Vani, and, and guys like that, Walt, guys I play ball with, you know, you, you think about who you want in a, in a foxhole with you yes. when the chips are down. And it's guys that, that just truly embellish that, that, that code. I mean, you and just, they were just, on the same team with you, yes, too. We watched you yes, guys play ball team. growing up. So yep. to know that those four Ds were instilled in you. Yes. And then also knowing Coach Leitner, it's amazing that you all are still together. These, to this day. Yes, to this, to this day, day. Like in each other's weddings, everything. Yes, yes. So you moved into a, a special field of work. Share with us what you do. Actually, um, I work for the state of Florida, Council and Solutions of Northeast Florida is something that I do on the side. And it's something that I just gravitated to because I found how passionate I was mm -hmm. about helping, helping people. And one of the things that, that is encompasses is anger management. Mm. I mean, you look around what's going around in America today in all these communities. Yes. I mean, there's just an awful lot of angry people yes. around here. So... I made that my emphasis, mm -hmm. anger management, and I wrote a book to support it. But before I talk about the book, I just want to talk about, you know, a lot of African-American kids, you know, have not heard of counseling, getting therapy, Correct. going to talk to somebody about your issues. You know, that's always something that we handle in-house. So I just want people to know that it, there are places that you can where go. you can go exactly and so get help. Saying that, what is your take on anger management in middle school, high school, et cetera? If you look at the numbers, in ex especially middle school, you're talking about the percentage of kids getting suspended is 89% of those kids are getting suspended because of behavior issues. Correct. You know, um, you, you scuffed up my Jordan. Um, you said something. Now, fake social media is, mm -hmm. is, is the corporate. I mean, and these kids don't know how to manage these emotions that they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Correct. They, they, I mean, middle school is, is notorious. Take Duval County. Just before COVID hit, Jacksonville, Florida was on pace to suspend 30,000 kids in high school. How many kids? 30,000. Oh, my At goodness. At the halfway mark, we was at 14,900 and something. My goodness. So but tell us how your, your book can help us with the anger to manage all this anger that's well, going on with all of these kids. I mean, and we're definitely focusing on kids, but I'm sure your book helps. Older. Adults as Adults well. As yes, well. Yes, absolutely. And that's an awesome question. You know, you, you look at it from a clinical perspective. Mm -hmm. You have cognitive therapy mm -hmm. going to your left. Mm -hmm. You have... Um, um, Behavioral. You, you, yes, but the, they, what they call evidence-based. Mm -hmm. You have evidence-based going to your right. So you look at those two avenues, there's a humongous section right here in the middle of people that's just not being helped and not being touched. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that have no clue what they're experiencing, but they know they're experiencing something. Mm -hmm. So this book goes after that segment of people to say, hey, listen, you know what? Answer some of these questions. Let's, let's dive into this. Let's pull out what it is that you're feeling and let's talk about it. And it starts to, to pay. It starts them to start journaling as well. Yes. Because uh, not just kids, but adults as well have no clue the power of the pen. No, they do not. And, and but they can find out. Absolutely. With your journal. With, with, exactly. Because the journal is about anger management. It's titled Managing Me. Yep. And once you can manage yourself, nobody can move you out of your Absolutely. space, no matter Absolutely. what. Absolutely. Paul, it's been such a pleasure sitting here chatting with yes. you. Thank you yes. so much. It's good to see it. you. Yes. To all our viewers, y'all take care. Until next time, God bless you for the culture. You ready, Sid? Chris, Let's do take this. It away. Everybody just scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Why? Because we got way more exclusive content for you right here on the Sassandra Show. Only on Afro TV, Comcast, Xfinity Channel 16, 23, and Roku. Yeah. Yes! Hello, everyone. If you are at work, at 
home, y'all drop everything and tune in because it's time for the Sephora <laughs> Show! Yeah! <laughs> Listen, I'm just kidding. Don't y'all get fired. Don't drop everything at work. Listen, speaking of fire, y'all...